Peace and blessings, family. Sister Ajali. Um, I wish Sister Tony Braxton a swift and certain recovery. She's had a very complicated life, and I think of her as a sister, even though she's a celebrity. I don't put her fully in the category of slut pretties, uh, but she kind of skirts for me it's I don't know what her natural hair looks like I, I uh, whatsoever and I'm just I'm I'm so bone tired of uh, black women with the just limpified nonsense hanging off their heads uh but I like Tony Braxton because she has fully black children. She almost exclusively has been with black men, married one, I think we lasted for 14 years. I don't know the names of the various brothers that she's dated, uh, but at, for a brief moment, she was on the swirling promotion thing where after her divorce from her first and only husband, whom she has two children by, is she then uh, did an interview with one, some, some magazine, whatever, and she said she didn't know that vanilla could taste so good, and she wanted to be with Mark Wahlberg, of all people, even though Mark was married, and he's, I understand, a racist, um, and she's like, oh, he's a little bit black, and he's a little bit white, and I was like, that's ridiculous, um, but at the same time, there's something about her that's very sister-like that I really appreciate. I never watched the show, the reality show, uh, Braxton Family Values. And I was sorry uh, that uh, her sister, Tracy Braxton, succumbed to cancer a couple years back. I even did a report on that. And, and Tony in 2008 was diagnosed with lupus my assessment on that is vaccines cause lupus the same as it causes a pronounced higher degree of autism in black males the Oh, reverse result in black females is lupus because in Africa, lupus is just non-existent pretty much. Here in the States, though, where we are, in order to attend public schools, required to give our children a rollout of vaccines, lupus among black women is so common it's it's terribly common and it's a devastating ailment now because of this ailment they are saying that it affects all the organs and i i definitively yeah i would agree with that uh but because also radiation is not helpful in any way sense or form and we, there's no way that any of us could not have radioactive damage in our bodies because it only takes one atom. And what came out of Fukushima was the equivalent of, like a uh, Japanese professor said, within two years, it was the equivalent of 10,000 Hiroshima bombs. The projection maps show a global-wide blizzard of radioactivity, which is particles, not waves. People, I think, sometimes don't understand that. These are things we can ingest and inhale. Uh, was it Hillary Clinton advised her people, just as she sent out a memo, she didn't make any broad announcement, but when Fukushima popped off, she advised them to start taking iodine in order to... Uh, eliminate the threat of radioactive iodine. So this stuff gets in your body and it causes massive systemic damage with proven latency. That, that's where they have tested and they know each single different radioactive element will have an outcome within a certain amount of years. 
One of the outcomes is what Dr. Yuri Bandashevsky called myocarditis, where it cesium-137 attacks the heart muscle, tax every organ, but because it is recognized as potassium in the body, just like iodine is recognized by the body as iodine, and if you aren't getting enough natural safe iodine, then it's going to go right to your thyroid and your thymus glands and destroy them. Thyroid issues are one of the first symptoms of radiological contamination because iodine, radioactive iodine overall tends to not last very long, but because Fukushima keeps fissioning, completely unchecked fissioning, it's best to keep a routine of taking iodine. I use nascent organic iodine and I research the source because you don't want anything from the water, right? So many different things to share about all of this. And I always try to narrow it down because I have a lot to offer. And I humbly ask you to watch the entire share all the way through because it will be informative. Share it with your family and your friends too because I'm going to show data uh, which is a testament to the reality we're facing, a testament to all I've studied with the books and books and books I've read that I know what I'm talking about. And it's unfortunate because most people have the... Oh, just range of understanding of the world that uh, Tony Braxton would have, where it's a very Negro Pian mindset. It's very, you know, superficial. Most people, and that's not against black us. Most people in every race, every nation are surface thinkers because you didn't know that there was anything else that you would have to ponder more deeply. You just take it as a given that everything's okay. The most amazing people on the planet are black you and me here in the unentitled snakes of America and also over in the UK. We have had personal experience upright with the devil. So we tend to understand what the heck is going on. And we have hard fought self-love, which leads a lot of us like Sister Tony uh, to remaining with black men. That's a beautiful thing. I hope she can find satisfaction in her relationships by stepping away from the Negro peon indoctrinated behaviors. Same way she's stepping away uh, from her um, just, I don't know what her diet regimen was, uh, but I understand, uh, she put out there that you get, be healthy. She is, she put off going for a, um, just an update on her condition. And I don't know if that's like the s parameter of what she considers healthy is going to these Western trained doctors who are there to just make some money off of you and promote Western whiteism. And so that won't be enough. Uh, but I hope that by just, you know, me being consistent, sooner or later, someone like a Tony Braxton will hear my warning about that radiation because even if it she had an 80% blockage in her left arterial vessel right directly coming off of her heart that is the, and the doctors told her I agree that she could have had a heart attack and she wouldn't have survived it and so they put a stint in there which is just a uh artificial probably silicon I don't know what the materials made out of necessarily but they would want something that the body wouldn't re reject immediately but anytime they put something in you your body's going to start attacking it and inevitably usually these things have to be replaced hopefully she can increase her complete wellness 
by going natural, organic, leaving the liquor alone, leaving the, you know, staying up to three o'clock in the morning. A lot of us do that like that's some sign of maturity. And no, that is a sign that you are completely brainwash into just perpetuating juvenile behavior you get the most powerful chelation activity as a black person through the hours of 9 to 2 a.m when you're asleep you you, we're not worms we're not lizards we're not night creatures we're supposed to be asleep at nighttime And that melatonin that's secreted from your pineal gland, it goes in and it removes all that dead stuff, especially if you spent the day getting some sunlight. Whoa, when you have adequate amounts of vitamin D3, the cancer is not going to be a problem for you, okay? Um, But for her issue with lupus, I would have to do more research because I really, there's certain conditions that, yeah, okay, you're that far along. Go, go to them white folks or whatever, that white trained allopathic medicine, because I don't want you to die. And you're at that point. Uh, But I'm sure there is a method to alleviate whatever condition she would be suffering from so that she wouldn't have almost an 80% blockage in her arteries and here's where the data comes in now you may be saying what what the wigner effect what's this to do and and this is um rad chicks christina consolo's channel salute to christina consolo she is a hard working white woman especially in the initial uh, years of Fukushima. She suffered her own debilitating issues, really serious ones, and I hope she's well. And on the mend, she hasn't been uh, vocal on social media, but she is such an authority, and she worked with um, Lauren Ray on this playlist here, The Wigner effect. It's hard to find this thing. So I'll put a link in it, a link to it in the pinned comments. But it goes over uh, the effect. That's the uh, graph. It's taken on special significance. Okay. Um, That's the graph right there of the radiation coming out of um, Japan. And they explain the effect that all that radiation, which it's everywhere, it's in every realm of our existence. So it affects everything and it affects the airplanes. And so you can watch this and get the scientific details thereby. But I thank Sister Jai Africa for mentioning this to me that there had been, when she mentioned it, it was only two planes uh, that had caught fire in the sky. And they, every plane now, because this is something that's been happening for a while and I would put up there every now and then about the airplanes. And they've been blaming bird strikes, bird strikes, where, you know, I can't show you, but these suckers just, the engine will catch fire. What? I've never heard of bird strikes like that. And there seems to be a campaign to put this whole bird strike phenomena up there as a plausible explanation, while at the same time they never, ever, ever mention the details of man-made radiation, let alone would they even worry about mentioning the Wigner effect. But here, Houston, we have a problem. Two United Airlines flights forced to turn back and make emergency landings in Texas after plowing into flock of birds as crew described hearing a loud pop. That could have just been the engine exploding, right? It didn't have to be bird strikes, and let's look into it further. I'm going to play the audio uh, from this news broadcast where, uh, I don't know, I think he's an engineer, also said that 
this is not something that he's he's not putting it in a direct confrontational manner uh, but he is giving the proof that no this is not ordinary back in columbus bird strikes are not rare they probably happen almost every day to some commercial airliner somewhere in the united states what doesn't happen every day is that it causes the kind of damage that we saw on this aircraft where you actually see flames shooting out the back and just a few days earlier this flames shooting from the so they cover you know the two separate incidents uh, but now there's more which while editing all of this together i realized this is an american airlines flight and the report i just shared was two united flights uh, this one here was caught by a jogger who just happened to hear this plane making strange sputtering sounds. And so he pointed his phone camera up and caught the plane's engine catching on fire. Damn. And so here's number, I, I don't know. I think I got more than four here. Arsenal women survived a scare after their plane caught fire as they were setting off from Germany, where they drew two to two, and then they go over the game. But uh, this is on the tarmac. So what? <laughs> Military planes also, the, the, they're most vulnerable because the military of every single government is severely neglected. They're ex it's expensive to run a military. And so with this one, Russian military plane, plane bursts into flames and crashes into a lake in region bordering Finland. I do believe one person lost their life because of that that's pretty intense and so this particular also engine catching fire um incident is this is reported on this very nondescript tiny little website that the general public is not going to be visiting and note the wording here civil aviation authority of nepal Claims there was no bird hit. Suspended airport passes of country manager and airport manager of Fly Dubai. Here they say it even clearer. The has blamed, they have blamed the country manager and airport manager of Fly Dubai for spreading false information of bird strikes. I think this is an order coming on a high because these would be the folks in charge telling everybody else down at the bottom that, uh, it say it's the bird strike, say that these engines burning up, but that's the Wigner effect. To have that much radiation in our atmosphere and 80% of radiation from all sources, uh, they even still, there is radiation from nuclear bomb tests being found in honey. And it's still up in the atmosphere. And so to have that much out there and it's not going to cause some sort of effect, to have orange skies have been visible in the most saturated with Fukushima fallout area, the West Coast, and you ain't never seen anything of the like whatsoever. Our planet has been slathered, deluge. So if it has an effect on inanimate matter, like engines of aircraft, because that's what it does. It causes something called interstitial vacancies because it's hot. It, on an atomic level, it's hot and it sends out little subatomic bullets that destroy everything around it. That's the Wigner effect. And so this stuff is in our food. This stuff is in our food. And the FDA is allowing everything in from Fukushima. Fukushima is just as radioactive today as it was way, way back. That's according to Mayanichi News, one of the premier news agencies of Japan. 
So this ain't something I'm making up in the feverishness of my, you know, heated imagination. It's what is. And for this story right here, where they're like, you know, the regular people down at the bottom, the pilots and the crew are saying, no, it's not bird strikes. Whereas on LinkedIn, which picked up that post from that site, they don't mention anything about people saying, no, it's false news, false information to say that this is a bird strike. It wasn't a bird strike. How many people's lives are they putting in danger uh, by making them think that it's no big deal? Even their own engineer said, eh, no, no, bird strikes never did this, setting the engine ablaze. Okay? So I just want you to know what we're dealing with because... We got this. I ain't coming here to get you scared because in the middle of all my research, I found remedies, solutions. Are they all going to be perfect? No, but it's a heck of a lot better than extinction. This is Tony Braxton's deceased sister, Tracy Braxton, who died from cancer. One of the other terrible outcomes from radiological ingestion or inhalation go to 25,000 years cycle.org I think the sister I don't mention people's names because I just you know what I share it, it seems to scare lots of folks um so I don't say names because I don't want you to have to live down a uh, connection with me but I thank you sister you availed yourself of the temporarily free medical consultations with Dr. Z. And you also, if you live in the new immediate New Jersey area, he does house calls. So here on 25,000 year cycle, you can avail yourself of the only platform that just is going to give you this information and this healing so support us in just doing what I wish others were doing too, but not very many are out here just putting this work in for us with all the data, all the reality where we talk about radiation and, and everything, all of it, whatever needs to be said and done. It's not like you go into a regular western doctor's office and they aren't even going to ask you what you're eating which is that's the sign right out the bat that you know go get the test and then hightail it out of there and come on over here all right straight black family pride is a map to forever mm. i love your family peace and blessings and all the best to sister tony braxton